Hi everyone, I'm Tom from Source Distribution, a UK product specialist for Arturia, and I'm here with the lovely people from Andertons to show you this new monster, which is the Polybrute 12. So Polybrute 12 is an evolution of our Polybrute or Brute ecosystem of synthesizers, uh, which started with the Mini Brute many, 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 many years ago, uh, then the Matrix Brute, then the Polybrute 6, and now here we are with the Polybrute 12. The Polybrute has all the signature DNA of a Brute synthesizer with its uh, metalizer, Steiner Parker filter, and immense modulation capabilities. But what it adds is 12 voices of polyphony, as the name might suggest, and also brings in a polyphonic aftertouch capable keybed with multiple different ways of interacting with that polyphonic aftertouch. So just give you a rundown of the Polybrew as a synth, just uh, for those of you that aren't aware. Two oscillators per voice, two very similar, one with a wave folder, uh, one with a sub octave. Then you have some front panel modulation controls, so uh, FM for the filter, uh, FM for the filters, uh, mixer control, so you can actually plumb each of the oscillators into the filters independently. Uh, both filters are quite different, so the Steiner Parker filter tends to be quite flavoursome and quite musical and quite metallic. Uh, and then a ladder filter, as you'd expect, that sort of classic rich uh, kind of liquid tone. Uh, in terms of modulation, you've got three envelopes, uh, three LFOs, and then this rather inspired uh, patching matrix. So the way this works is you've got four different modes. Choose your presets in the preset mode. In the modulation mode, you can assign modulations. It's really, really cool. So you take one of the sources, you pick a destination, and then you just choose how much of that source goes to that destination. It's a really quick way of designing complex sounds. Uh, it's really easy to go from something very, very simple to something very, very detailed and intricate and moving. So Polybrute 12 then, a uh, big step up from the previous uh, synth. Um, everything that was from the original was still there. So Polybrute 6 was an incredibly expressive machine as it was. So uh, you have your pitch and mod wheels, you have this Morphe controller, which allows you to morph different aspects of different patches in different ways. You have this ribbon control, which is quite stealthily hidden. Uh, a lot of people don't notice that sometimes. Uh, three pedal inputs, so you have a sustain pedal input and two expression inputs. But as I mentioned previously, the big sort of update with this one is the polyphonic aftertouch. So polyphonic aftertouch. For those of you that aren't aware, it allows you to articulate notes polyphonically. So on normal kind of key beds, you'll be able to apply aftertouch. But if you do it on one note, so I'm gonna hold this chord and play this low note here. If I apply aftertouch to that, it applies to the whole. What polyphonic aftertouch allows you to do is articulate each note. So you see, I'm just articulating that one there. So that's quite a powerful feature in and of itself because almost every aspect on the front panel of this synth is a polyphonic destination for modulation. And now we have many polyphonic sources, i.e. the keys. One of the coolest polyphonic features uh, on this particular synth, and it was apparent on the original Polybrute, but it's even more potent on this one, is the morph control. Now, morphing is a really cool feature that lets you scan between two distinct presets at the same time. So it's not really preset morphing, that's a bit of a kind of uh, simplification. It's almost two states. So if I get this bass sound, you can see that there's two different sounds on either side of that pot. Now, you can have many different things happening on either side of that pot. You could have like a really lush pad on side A and then something kind of sequency on side B. So the, uh, the morph is also a polyphonic destination. So what I'll do with this sound, I'll just show you it without using the polyphonic aftertouch. So, so I'm just moving that pot, but we can actually use uh, the polyphonic aftertouch to, to move that pot. So I'll just show you what that sounds like. If we go to the aftertouch, uh, assign the modulation, there, go to aftertouch and send it by a reasonable amount. You can see I've now got that morph pot under each key, so. It's a very simple 
sound, but you can imagine that you can have a lot of very complicated things happening between those two key presses. So almost two distinct presets at any one time, which is very, very cool. The other um, aftertouch modes, so there are uh, three total. Uh, there's mono aftertouch, which is simplified uh, mono aftertouch, polyphonic aftertouch, which we've just had a look at. And then there's these three alternative aftertouch modes. Uh, and I'll explain what they are. So the first one is called full touch envelope AT. So what that does is it gives you um, much finer control over what the envelope is actually doing. So if I initialize this sound and I'll give you a very quick idea of what that's doing. So with this full touch after touch, it's effectively changing the way that you that you interact with the envelope. So with a high velocity, it allows you to sort of pluck the sound. So it's very plucky there. So if I give it a bit of decay. And what you can do with the attack is sort of smooth off that pluck. So let me show you that in action. So very plucky. So I've got the envelope at zero here. So technically speaking, it shouldn't be making any sound. So if I put the velocity up, smooths out. So it's sort of changing the on signal that you'd get with a key. So the on press to almost like a sort of envelope. You're, you're changing how you interact with it. And what it does as well is it gives you the full throw of the key to play with. So I'm playing very gently here to get that sound. So I'm able to be really deliberate It's almost like having a VCA under each of your fingers or an envelope under each of your fingers. It's it takes a minute to get used to it. I'm still getting used to it, full disclosure. But you can do quite a lot of clever stuff with that. You can have separate VCA modes on either side of the morph. So you could have one sound that's very, very plucky and one sound that's sort of like very long and evolving. The other mode is full touch after touch. So if I just find a little preset that will give you an idea of what that's doing. This is a good one. So before creation, so you've got this very sensitive key bed. And then you've got after touch as well. So I can be very very gentle with it. And I've also got that polyphonic aftertouch as well. So Last mode is a really, really cool one. I'm going to go back to initialize sound. I'm just going to smooth it off very quickly. So he says, making something very harsh. <laughs> so this is just a triangle wave. What I'm going to do is uh, use this alternative mode called full touch, after touch, and Z. Now, this is my favorite one. So what it gives you is that subtle control plus after touch plus the Z plane from the Morphe. So you've got initial pressure, poly pressure, and a third modulation source. So let me just set up something very quickly so you can hear how that sounds. So if I send uh, the metalizer, uh, and then I'll put that on after touch so you can hear what that sounds like. So this will sound like that. Maybe turn it down a little bit, it's quite harsh. So you've got this sensitive kind of key press. So you've got that range of motion. And then what I'll do, I'll also assign something to this Z plane here as well. So let me have a think, what do I wanna do? I probably wanna bring up the volume of oscillator two. Okay, that's quite a cool thing to do. So I'm gonna bring that up here, go to the Z, turn that up. So in theory, 
should have, provided I've sent it, sent it to the right filter. Doop, uh, expression Z. There you see, so, again, very basic sound. I'm just showing you very basic things that you can do with it so we can get on something more advanced in a little while. So you've got that initial touch. And as I go into the third zone, it's bringing up that second oscillator. So, like I say, first touch with that metalizer. So I've got the whole run of that key. And when you get to the bottom of that key, you, you basically hit a spring. You can kind of feel where the next level of aftertouch is. So, so again. It's quite easy to go from something very simple, sorry, uh, just applying three modulation destinations and a, and a little bit of effects to get something quite complicated. So you can imagine the array of different things you can do. Like I mentioned, any almost any part on the front panel is a polyphonic destination. So you could have filters as a destination for the polyphonic aftertouch. You could have the envelope looping um, cycles or the, the speed of them be a polyphonic destination as well. The sort of possibilities are kind of endless uh, with this as well. Now that's not to mention you do have all the other expressive things that I mentioned earlier as well. So the ribbon, that, the pedals, the sustain. Um, it's also worth mentioning that for Polybrute 12, we completely redesigned uh, Polybrute Connect so that is a really powerful uh, instrument, virtual instrument host platform specifically for Polybrute that allows you to completely remote control the whole synth. So if you want to get really under the hood um, without sort of mucking around with the front panel, and I don't know why anyone would want to do that. Of course you want to touch the knobs, but just in case you're one of those psychos that don't want to, um, you, there, there is a software platform called Polybrute Connect, and it's been totally re-engineered to uh, function a bit more like Analog Lab, for those of you that are familiar with that. You've got category browsing, uh, all of the sounds are categorized. It's very easy to navigate. It's very easy to design sounds as well. And because it's a VST, you can host it inside your door and hit it with as many MIDI CCs as you want. So I think I'll just go through a couple more sounds. Uh, let me just find one. Uh, this expressive sextet is quite cool. So uh, this has a lot of stuff going on. So this preset is a full touch with envelope and it's also a layer as well. So I give it a gentle, well, I hope if I turn the volume up, wouldn't it? <laughs> if I give it the gentlest of touch, I'm really not digging into that key at all to get that sound. So you're able to be very expressive with the lower notes. and only apply aftertouch to the highest notes. Very evocative kind of sounds out of it. It's worth saying it's not just a kind of evolving pads machine. I mean, it does excel at that kind of thing, but if you want kind of big bass sounds. They're there as well. Uh, a lot of the original Polybrute presets have been re-engineered as well to make better use of the modulation capabilities on here. So it comes with 400 presets out of the box and there's a lot of presets that are kind of intertwined with that full touch stuff. Uh, a lot of the original sounds, so there's a sound called Brute Embrace, uh, which is the first preset on the original Polybrute that has been sort of re-engineered. make use of the extra modulation capabilities that this keyboard provides. Uh, in terms of other bits and pieces as well, uh, it's worth noting that uh, you have the ability to play with 
ops and sequences a bit more. So there's a mode within uh, the Polybrute called the Matrix Sequencer. Uh, I'll show that in a second, but just to give you an idea of what you can do with ARPs. So. so the harder I'm pressing, the more prominent the notes are becoming. So what you can do with the matrix sequencer, so I'll go to initialize preset, again, very simple sound. The uh, matrix sequencer is a, a hybrid between uh, ARP and a sequencer. So what it allows you to do is uh, effectively control how or what notes are gonna play and when. So it's almost like a kind of sequence designer. So this is gonna be a very basic sound just to show you uh, the capability. So what you can do, is choose when notes come on. So what I've done is taken those two notes out there. So instead of doing the standard sequence of thing of it's can use the polyphonic aftertouch to uh, impart uh, some articulation to the notes you want to pop out more. So if I go to the mods again, and what I'll do, I'll send the polyphonic aftertouch to the uh, cutoff of the master cutoff. So if I send that by 100% and turn this down, I'm able to articulate which notes pop out from that sequence. So not only have I got the ability to design ARPs, I've also got the ability to design how the notes articulate as well. It's really, really cool. Uh, the other thing I should mention is uh, this keyboard completely complies with the MPE standard. So it will receive MPE messages. It will send MPE messages as well. So if you've got uh, a door that sends and receives MPE, I'm just thinking something like Ableton Live or whatever, uh, this will totally communicate with that. If you've got software instruments or other hardware synths that work with uh, polyphonic aftertouch messages, this will totally comply with that. Uh, so that's the Polyboot 12 in a nutshell. Um, I think we'll close out with some sounds in a minute, Oz. But if you want to find out more, like and subscribe, please put your questions in the comments section below. Uh, this is coming out on the 14th of May, which is four days from now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, check out the Andertons website for more information. I've been Tom, and here's some lovely sounds.
goes in. <laughs> that one is, that is a good sound.